Hey, Pritesh, good morning. Hey, David, good morning. <coughs> hey, Samir. Hey. Hey, uh, I have updated the agenda. Not sure, David, if you want to bring up anything before we can start the agenda. <clears throat> hey, David, uh, if you're talking, you're on mute. Okay, um, let me go through the agenda. Uh, so far, the status is green for both Alpha 1 and RC1. I don't see any call outs either in the Notary V2 channel or uh, uh, or here in the agenda itself, uh, no updates. Uh, we know that uh, the team, the broader team is uh, not available from, uh, from uh, uh, Shibay and team. Uh, they are still on uh, holiday uh, this week. So not much traction in any of the items or updates through the GitHub as well. So with that said, uh, Alpha 4 for dev build on October 13th uh, is still green. Um, Pritesh, you said you will have to do some small two, three liner changes in notation and notation go. Uh, after the merge is completed for uh, pull request 131 to build the dependencies, um, you said you are going to create a PR. I did not see any new PR. Are you creating a new PR? Mm, I thought the release, we are like four or five days away. So like, I don't, I don't see <laughs> PR right now. And there is a change which needs to be merged. So anyway, my PR won't work unless that page merges is changes. 45, right? Uh, yeah. I yeah. don't remember this, the number, but yeah, Rakesh needs to raise a PR and then we need to merge it before we make it, make, we, before we update the dependencies to Alpha 4. Okay, okay. So it is awaiting changes from Rakesh. Basically, Rakesh has to finish the changes for the trust road, trust policy thing, and then raise a PR, and then you have to raise a PR to yeah. build on the dependencies, right? Yeah. So it's all independent. Okay, yeah. no worries, no worries. Yeah. Um, David, there was a question um, the other day, <clears throat> and also on the September last week, you were talking about considering to move the notary project repo as notation action. And I think Steve also sent some comment. Is there anything regarding that you want to bring it up here? Uh... <clears throat> I did not see Steve's comments. I'm pulling up Slack right now. Oh, yeah. He did comment uh, October 4th. Okay, yeah, I see his comment. I don't see I don't see how that's a, that's a no. Um, and I actually the 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 comment that I had was um, uh, is is actually a uh, the the feedback that I had on the on the the item, the the one item I had was like this should support any any plugin, right? Um, and so I think that that's going to be iterated upon. So I just, I just kind of for, 
visibility and for other people to be able to start to get feedback and use it. That's kind of why I wanted to try and move it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think it's something that would be beneficial for everybody. So, uh, um, yes, but I think this is highly vendor specific thing. I mean, if we, even if, if you look okay. at the code, we are, we are downloading plugins from, uh, as your repository saying okay. like the, the problem is how will we maintain it in future? It's okay. like, for example, even if it, let's say multiple vendors comes and add their code, will it point the URL to the, their download repository, repository base, which is their specific. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, so, so I think that, uh, the, the, one of the p pieces of feedback I have that I think we're trying to put, put into RC2 is the notation, uh, like plugin add, you know, whatever it is. And then at which point you would, with the GitHub action, you'd remove that, right? You would, you would remove the actual hard coded download of the plugin, but I totally get the, the, the vendor specific thing, which I think that's fair. If that's the only holdup like that, um, cause I, if you look at the one issue that I filed on that repo, um, it mm -hmm. was, it, it was to make it like, not like Azure. So Azure specific, um, I, that, <laughs> and, and it was like great feedback. Um, and so I think if we could do that, I'm, and, and in light of the fact that we're trying to move towards a, you know, once we have the ability to, let's say, do a notation plugin, add blah. Um, and then that would remove the hard coded URL for plugins. Would that be sufficient? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can consider that in that case because then it doesn't become like uh, a vendor specific. Yeah. Like vendor specific action then. Yeah, I don't. I don't want it to be. I, I just. I yeah, like I because, said. Yeah, I, I, I want it to be generic. <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I mean that's, that's the basic idea. We added plugin because we don't want we we, we don't want the maintenance headache for this repository and yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at the one issue that I have there. And um, it was from 15 mm -hmm. days ago. Um, that's yeah. It, it's yeah, basically support for multiple plugins or no plugins, which basically is the, you know, and so, so people don't have to specify Azure and VARs. Right. So it's like, obviously if people want to use an AWS plugin, they it's the, uh, you know, I want the, to support that. Um, you know, I think, so that's generic for anybody to use that way. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I can just, I mean, then I can just, uh, you know, I could just state like, hey, like uh, the feedback is once we, you make this, you know, like let's just say the what I have for that feedback item is local, like a local only as the default. Um, then it, you know, then then we could, you know, consider moving it to, to notation. So that at that point, it would be more vendor agnostic. Yep, I agree. Uh, but okay. the problem with that is we don't support local signing. Local signing is only for test use cases of now in RC1. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> okay, which is fine. fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't no, want, I don't want to encourage people to use GitHub plugin for local signing. Right. Right now, we could put a note in the readme or whatever, right? Cool, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that I mean, and that's pretty that's that's pretty high up on my list as well for the backlog, um, is to is to actually have that local signing work. So if it's I mean, it's I know we don't have it in RC one right now, but it, it's in my yeah. mind it's it's bubbling to the top of the highest priority after RC one. If it, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was last blog that I remember on finding a way to encrypt and decrypt the keys or something like that. And after that, it, we... I, I think Roy and Milin was discussing some time back when we were in office on Thursday, like two, three, three weeks ago, right, Pritish? Is that what you're talking about? The encryption uh, no, the... decryption part of it for local science think... itself? Yeah, I don't remember that discussion, but yes, we were looking into that. and. A standard got deprecated and things, and that after that we weren't able to find a really good solution. So yeah, I mean yeah, we should revisit this, but yeah, that's that's a post RC one. Okay, um, okay. I think we can focus on RC one right now. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so the so the so the the alpha four PR is that up? 
right now? Is it there for for notation? Out by by today or tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. It's still not up, uh, Dave. Yeah. Okay. We should have an update sometime. So it's basically going to be a whole nother week, probably, till we get it, till we get it up there. Sounds like. I mean, anyway, Shiva's team is not here, so we want Shiva to review it. So anyway, it will take till Monday. Right. So yeah, Monday. That's what we are targeting Monday morning. Yeah. For Shiva to review. Okay. Well, yeah. I think if you can have one other person on your side review it by then um yep. and then address any feedback and then that way it's like closer to merge that'd be good um yeah yep that's the idea yeah okay right. okay um how are we doing on the pr uh prioritize list of reviews i think we much two. we approved two of them i think one is waiting from uh Keybase side to approve other one. I just one is other merged for other one. We are reviewing that. There, there are CLI specs, I think, which uh, there are some feedbacks already there, and I will be adding some, some more feedback there. So, yeah, so last on Monday, the number 137 was the, the highest to review, and I don't still don't see a review on it. Uh, but, uh, that, we, that's blocked on the discussion that remember we were talking about the, the, the default setting, right? We yeah. discussed about well, that, David, last uh, meeting. Well, right. Well, right. And like I said, though, yeah. you could still review the code and we could look to see uh, which one is set by default. Because I think we all actually agreed that system level default is is good. Yeah. But yeah. we just, but we just, I didn't, I didn't take the time to look, review the code to know which one is set. Because there's both sure. in the code path. Yeah, I can take a look today for that. That's that's my that's a my that I didn't but, that but during the discussion, we we also discussed, right, David, like if the config file is not defined at the user level, then system level becomes the default. But if the config file is configured at the user level, then it's a kind of user level gets overridden on top of the system level. So it's based on whether it exists or not exists, right? If both exist, then what's the default? Kind of is an alignment that- we Yeah, need. I think that's just, I think that is the, I don't think there's <clears throat> confusion on that. Maybe I'm, maybe, because it if if the, the system level basically uh, is the priority because that's the lockdown highest permission, right? Hmm. Um, for for security related things, right? If if it's just a okay. preference type of thing, then yeah, the user level will override. Yeah. So, but but ultimately, right? We want we anything you know that's in a secure path to be to be not somebody just can do whatever they feel yeah, like. Yeah, but there is again a thing. If a process is running at user level, then we might want to pick user level. If there's notation, basically CLI is running at system level, we might want to pick system level. Like there's that. That's okay. one more. So I, I still think, think, yeah. So I still think though that uh, it, it's it's like we can review the PR and the code and yeah, I agree. Um, and then we can and then like even if if it's like you know what's the default mode like <laughs> we yeah. could do we could come back and just do a little tweak later or or a minor tweak in the pr and and do what we think is the best for now and not yeah. hold up like everything else just for that you know if i i agree that's a small pr i should take a look yeah we we can act as well create a new pr and watch probably for just the default thing yeah exactly we could we can yeah it's yeah. I mean, because this, I mean, that is a pretty core, you know, <laughs> a pretty, a pretty yeah. core chunk of code for everything functioning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Apart from, apart from this, we did merge the EKU PRs from Ian and me in Notary project. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I saw I, that you did the PR on the Corgo. 
Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I'm not a code reviewer, so I can't help there. I, 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 all those I, I, I out, agree so. there. So that, that's what took some of my time because I wanted to work on that because positions were merged and I wanted to close the issue. So I would spend some of my cycles there on publishing the PR. That's the slip part. Yeah. So that's that's what we make the progress this week. Okay. Okay. Um, I think so out we, of the four prioritized one, yeah, three are in progress and one, yeah, we just discussed now. So one is completed. I think Samir uh, merged it. The PR 341 is, uh, is, is kind of completed. That was one of the PR that was prioritized. <clears throat> Okay, cool. And it looks like, yeah, Pratesh, you nine hours ago approved the 146. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. But, so it looks like that one's pretty much ready to go minus one more approval. Um, I think so probably could be merged when they come back on Monday. That's my guess. Um, let's see. The envelope type config. I know is one that's a smaller change. Um, 159 on notation go. Uh, let me check that. Which is that, uh, David? Uh, so there's one on notation go. It's only like three files. It's really small. So that one's that one's open. Um, Can you share? Yeah, I could share the link. Just yeah. looking at. I mean, I know that one wasn't in the priority list, but I just <clears throat> look looking at the open PRs that we have. Uh, there is an issue there when you define how the interaction will work. For example, in case of plugin, we don't want notation to derive the, we don't want notation to follow the default CPC format. In case of plugin, we want the plugin format. Does that make sense? That's the, that's the, that's the reason I, so this, this, this was specifically merged with other PR and I asked women to remove, remove it out of the other PR because there is a discussion pending here. So we, and we need to document that. Is this part Go. of RC1? Uh, yes. Yeah. I am going to set the milestone to RC1 so we can see that. Yes, yeah, so it's like <laughs> we need some writer like how it will behave this flag because for for plugin, for example, uh, a vendor can have a plugin with only supports so one one signature format, and a vendor we want to enforce that signature one signature format. We don't want user to define that. It can be just like it can be just like half, half one paragraph writing about what would you behave in different use cases that will help that we have consensus here. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So should we put? Because um, I don't see that. I, that's a totally fair point. Um, I, I think I just want to make sure it's captured somewhere. So maybe in the associated issue three twenty five, we put that note in there. Sure, I think um, I did it on other PR. Let me copy paste my discussion from there. This PR, yeah. Okay. Oh, I think it's in oh, 146. It, it is actually uh, 146 is linked uh, to this uh, issue 325. You see that pull request 146 is there, but uh, well, right, but it doesn't have the context. I think it. I think yeah. it's good to yeah. pull it out of the PR and post paste it. This paste it into the issue. to the chat on the issue, so that way we you don't have to search for it. Yeah, I will do it after this meeting. I will okay, cool. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Um, is there any? I'm just looking at what else we have nine PRs on the <laughs> on notation. Um, so maybe we can knock these out fairly fast. Um, I uh, 
I added in, or at least a couple. There's one which is just like a Go report badge. Um, I don't. Do you want me to just like share my screen or? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay let me uh, let me do that. Yeah. Okay. Should see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. This one literally just uh, adding the Go report card badge. <laughs> so it's, I'm just trying to, just these are like really small things that just trying to add additional flavor. I mean, it's pretty basic, yeah. but yeah, it's a README file change. I just need somebody to approve that. Um, so that's one open SSF scorecard. Uh, it's, it's another one, which, um, if, if you're not familiar, um, it actually has a number of kind of best practices around secure supply chain, um, mm -hmm. like our supply chain security. And so it analyzes the repo for a, a number of these best practices. And then it actually puts that information into the security tab. Um, so similar to, we already have code QL enabled. Um, and when you come into here, you can, you can see this. Um, we have no issues, but like, just to give you an idea what it looks like, I just recently enabled it in the Ratify repo. Um, you would be able to see something like this, where you can actually get data back from, you know, the tool, the OpenSSF tool, and then it gives you data around things you can do to kind of fix issues okay, oh that's so that's a code ql uh hold on do a does it scan the repo david yeah yeah so this this one's one yeah it does yeah it's a it's a static code analysis tool hmm. so like one of the things uh yeah like pin dependencies for instance so one of the things that um it checks is like you know you should have pen dependencies for your github actions so that way, if for some reason the upstream tool gets compromised or whatever, you know, you're not just ingesting whatever's up there. Um, and so this is like a security, you know, data that's from the scorecard that comes back. And so that basically would be what um, this PR would enable. Um, oh. It's, yeah, just gives you that data. Do we have the scorecard chart or somewhere so that we know what score is what, like, kind of? Uh, you do, uh, I if I, I mean, I couldn't, if yeah. I can, I could fork this and then we could run it against my fork and then you could kind of see if that would help. Um, oh. But it it's going to be what it's going to be, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Also, will you be using this PS all against all three repos? Yeah, I mean, I think I just was going to start with notation, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be good to do it against all the other ones as well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can also take a look at that and look into the pull requests. Maybe not every everything has a milestone. So I see notation go has three. Mm. Yeah. Annotation. Yeah, and then the end-to-end -end test framework as well. I mean, that one would be really nice That's to have uh, reset. That will change uh, after we push the test and test policy one. The verification will change. That's why I'm waiting for that change to push. If that makes sense. You mean the tests themselves will change? Yeah, because right now the verification is using the command. It will be test and test policy based. So the itself will change. Okay. Um, that's why I'm especially waiting on this PR. I'm not reviewing it. I, like that's the only reason. Like I want to make the change there, and then we have to update the PR anyway. And then we made the update in this PR. Could we? I mean, could we? If this looks good, can we like? Can we merge it, it and then make the change? Uh, it will break. The, it will break here. If we want to do alpha four, we'll have to fix this also. Otherwise, build will fail. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm waiting for this. Yeah, it's a chicken and an egg. 
right? I mean, we also yep. <laughs> we also don't know what what else may potentially be broken every single time we merge something, right? So it's kind of like yeah, I, I I agree. I'm just waiting for Alpha Four, and then I will I, I will we'll distribute this one. So David, the uh, add open SSF scorecard, right? That you you are tagging it to Alpha Four or RC Bound? I I don't know. I, <laughs> it depends <laughs> on whatever you know we. We're now, I don't know, going on a week or two, two. I don't know so how yeah, many weeks after we decided we were going to release it. So I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, I don't really. Where, wherever it lands is where it lands. I'm just calling out easy ones. Hopefully, that are easy to, you know. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll tag it to RC one and not to RC. Uh, sorry, Alpha four. If you're okay. Yeah. Or the, just to call out for one, it's not a blocker. Even if you miss one of them, they won't block the release. We can add it after the release because it doesn't affect the user experience. It's just that on GitHub repo, we can show that okay, we are maintaining our repo by. Yeah, I think, um, and I think for Cozy support, um, I feel like we're pretty close on that. Um, yes, I think one thing. I think like I think like we have the pool, the PR there. Uh, there's like one left, I think. Uh, yeah, so this one, right? And then basically after that, it's just the, just the, uh, the yeah, one that's my... the, 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 this one, right? The 365. Uh, okay. Or, well, there's this one as well. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think the data one is, uh, I think the CO2, I think it's pretty old one. I don't think we need to review that. I think, uh, I think, I think it's, it's just this one. Fun. This is yeah. like the newer one. Yeah. And there would be one more PR. Wait, I have done. I didn't preview this one. CO2 is still there. Yeah, it's in draft yeah. stage. So I think the, I think it's in the it's part of the notation only, right? Yeah. So it's 302. I'm not sure it's pretty old. August 12. So yeah, I think we need clarity from Ashiva's team, but I think if we uh if they just if they just merge this one, I mean, I know we have the config type thing, but that shouldn't block the cozy itself. It's just more of the default behavior thing, right? Yeah. Um, then it's then it's really just getting it merged into notation itself, and I'm not sure which one of the PRs. Yeah, I guess I think they like, need to merge. What? I'm sorry. What? What I see is the 365 is not tagged to RC1, and it should be tagged to our RC1. Looks like. Okay. That is in the notation repo. The support cozy, the pull request for 365. Okay. Let's see. So let me tag it to RC1. That's the reason these okay. are all missing in the in the RC1 uh, list of PRs. If you go to the dashboard itself, you don't see this unless you come to the repo and see. Yeah, this is this is just to the dev branch, so I don't, this is not needing all of the same level of approvals. Um, doesn't have the same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, let's. I guess we could go to the. Do you see any? I'm sorry, what? The CLI end-to-end -end test framework, uh, uh, we decided it's only for sign and verify, right, Pratesh and David? Uh, like, sorry, what? not all the scenarios, correct? This for one. the end-to-end -end test framework? Yeah. That's what yeah, we that's right. We just wanted to get the framework started, and then we can iterate upon this, the coverage scenarios, right? Yeah. So yeah. if we, so I mean, I, I mean, I would, I mean, I know I understand the reasoning of, you know, the verification, uh, but I, I really would rather just get this merged uh, and and then have it break one of the tests, because that way at least we have every single build and merge, we we have the ability to test things automatically for dev builds and everything else, you know, and we we don't have to like we you know we can get this merged and then we don't have to like gate PRs on this yet until we have everything we know that it's solid and 
you know, happy or whatever. Right. So like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want this to block alpha four release. Um, if <laughs> you do, you know what I mean? If we know that the, uh, that test that fa that's going to fail is, is because of the test itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but will build, I think build will also fail. So you won't have an artifact there. Uh, am I wrong no, there? Let no, I won't. No, me. this won't fail the build. No, huh? -uh. No, this no? one, this okay. will, this will not fail the build. This is only for. Oh yeah, my bad. Oh my bad. Yeah. I will take a look at that. Yeah. This is the end to end testing, right? He's talking. About yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is just adding. It's not going to block the builds at all, and, oh, and we're okay. not going to. I'm not going to add it. I'm not going to make it. You know, uh, gate the PRs on this yet. I mean, I think soon Fair we enough. will. And it's a yeah. framework part of it, which is outside of the repos build thing. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this would be a value add now, and it sure, should not sense. block all RC4 or Alpha makes 4. Sense. I mean, I will take a look. So, there are two PR, three PR trying to work on. So, yeah, I will, I will do that. I'm taking note of the PR. And I have reviewed, I have approved both of your PRs, the open one and the other one. The, the PR uh, uh, number three, three, three in the notation repo. Uh, let me ping the number. It says the dependency 132. If it is merged, then this can be merged. Which but which one? That is that's the add policy command. Oh, that's just going to the dev branch. Yeah. So like I said, so like I said, I'm not going to merge that because it's. I mean, it's technically approved, and there's not the same criteria. I mean, you could merge whatever to anything other than main, right? Yep. It's like. So I, I'll let them merge that. I'm not going to touch it. Um, and we don't need a review from you on that. Because now once that goes into main, obviously, it's a different story. Is that part of RC4? Sorry, Alpha 4 or RC1? No, the policy command is, I think we have tagged for RC1. Yeah, it is to, mm -hmm. and it's set to RC1. Um, I don't know. I, let's see. 132. I, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's merged. So now it won't yeah, that's merged, fail. Yeah. 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 So they. Yeah, the so yeah, but I I'd imagine yeah. the next, and I don't know if this is, you know, it might be a consideration to just switch it to merge domain. Um, I'll just put this in the comments. Uh, hey, sorry to jump in. I don't understand the policy command. Is this a trust policy we're talking about? Adding, yeah, it's it's. It supports adding, updating, greeting, deleting trust policies. Uh, yes. I would like to review that first because we have right, of course. This, no, of course. Yeah, spike, no, we <laughs> of haven't course. this is a spec because it was not part of RC one. Correct. It was not part of RC one. Right. We said we only bring trust store CLI commands in RC one, and trust policy can be separate. So what changed? Uh, it's it's basically there was nothing tagged there. Uh, uh, Samir. So we have to tag it to something at policy command. So that should be post RC1 is what we are telling, right? Yeah, I think it was some good discussion, David, that policies uh, have multiple uh, nuances to it, right? You can uh, configure very granular policies. So if we introduce the policy commands now, we need to make sure that their use doesn't break any of the options we have added, and we decided to do it in RC2 or post RC1. Okay, now it's not for Yeah, us. I mean, this is like really low on the priority list of review things. I mean, I don't, I just, and like I said, this is to a dev branch, so I don't want to. Okay. okay. You know, we're obviously like we go to go to main, like we're going to need more reviews and more flushing of specs and other things. So I, it's, I get it. it I, I don't know. Um, all right. So yeah, if we can, I think priority, maybe I need a new list. Um, also the specs, I know she, uh, Yi had, and I actually need to spend some time to review that as well. Um, so the specs are there for review, and then um, we need the the test framework and the, yeah, the 137 still up there. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'll put together, Kind of a renewed list and i don't know if we want to spend any of the remaining time looking at the specs um just use the time for that or, or do we have something else we want to cover i have something else to cover then we can okay. uh, 
time permitting we can we can look at it i'm pushing a something in chat this is a feature i believe i, I need some help on uh, i decided to dive deep on this one if you look at the chat and open what i just pushed in the chat so you had marked it uh, back for rc1 um, so i so i was curious is this for the uh, spec part of revocation or is it for the implementation part what were you are thinking about there. Yeah, well, I thought we agreed that the spec was part of RC1, but the implementation was post RC1. Correct. So, so this is marked for RC1. Uh, this is uh, so, this is so, so detailed. I was thinking pushing it out uh, for RC2 and just using a new one for just the spec part. And I think the spec part is mostly done on how we want to implement it, not fully fleshed out. Uh, and this one is going into a lot more uh, options to consider versus a spec, this HackMD doc. So I was thinking, let's push, let's just push this out or close this one and just create a different story for doing the spec for revocation handling, which I believe is mostly added already by Pratish. So, okay. <clears throat> so this is the, so you're proposing then that, yeah. I, I'm trying to make sure I understand what you want to do. So you want to close 72 and you want to update this story? make it like a user story? Bring any story, whether it's a story or it's just something in the notary project repo itself, uh, where, where, where the specs go saying, finalize the revocation spec for RC1. Uh, and it is just the spec part. And I believe most of it is done already. So it seems like this is the spec part. This is going, this only suggests multiple ways of consider this, consider that. Uh, I look through this and it just gives the pros and cons of options to consider. It is a discussion uh, on what options to consider. Uh, and I was uh, thinking, and I was thinking, let's just collapse all of it. I think most of it is collapsed already. I think we decided to just say CRL OCSP is the way to go. Okay, so then, yeah, I mean, this, 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 I think feedback here was a valid point of we should update the, the, yeah. the actual doc here with whatever that is, because this, this is the revocation Correct. spec, basically. So, yeah. actually, I looked, I read through this as well. British, while I have your eyes on this one, if you're looking at the screen right now, this spec key revocation, I believe it was written thinking about keys or written as keys, but they actually mean certificates. Uh, That's correct. Like, I mean, so initially in notary we do, we, we thought it will be pretty open. We have kept it open, but yeah, this was written specifically for like thinking certificates in mind, but it can also be applied to keys. But in case of keys, there is no revocation logic only applies to certificate. Like if you see like that, there's a revocation list and things like that, which is basically CRLs. Yeah, so I'm thinking, Pradesh, uh, again, we're just uh, using the time to decide that this key revocation.md, this goes away or this gets replaced or search and replace with certificate. And we talk about certificate revocation. Okay, I think that, I think that's a proposal. Uh, we still, so you can keep that in notary report for some time until we clean up that because right now there are multiple docs like that. So what I was thinking was, let's update the issue with what we are want to do there. And let's not delete the doc, we'll edit the doc, which are already pushed to notary repo. What okay. we're gonna do is we can, we can split the key management, the, the yeah. parent issue yeah. you had right. into two one, one is for certificate one and one is for artifact or signature level revocation. Signature level revocation, and then again, uh, and put them as a spec right now, like create the issue as a spec. Right now. Certificate level revocation, we will put in RC1 spec. Yes. Key level, we will move, we will do post RC1. 
if you want to support that so we don't even need to to tag in rti i think 85 is what you are talking about uh, resending the signature validity which is revoking the signature right yeah, yeah. okay that helps 85 i don't know which issue is 85 uh okay. <clears throat> it's closed as well yeah yeah good i i like what you're writing uh, david i'm really into writing i mean i can add it and see um uh i was going to talk to you about how much the the differences between the two so pratish like so we have revocation spread across multiple documents i was searching through where all we have talked about revocation it's in multiple dot md files in the notary project spec repo yeah it's uh, so i think what i'm hearing is this one of us just needs to create a pr and edit and update all of the places at one time yeah so some of the documents are scenario documents and i initial discussion some are just like uh scenarios so yes yeah, someone we will need to sit one time and like rearrange the documents remove which is not required or which are obsolete and things like that someone has right. to the to this part yeah correct but i think ada we have we have alignment that our suggestion will be using crl and ocsps as standards based mechanisms to do revocation handling that's correct so we do have a draft that it's just that we want to revisit it once can so you point the draft i was looking for where the draft was where we have called a draft and we, and while david has this comment open we can add that link here as uh, well i just shared it on zoom are you shared it on zoom david if you don't yeah. mind add that add that link that uh, and to, it was to... indeed it was reviewed but we want to bring it up to make sure we didn't miss anything yeah like this was this was reviewed in initial discussion of trust and trust policy then we focused our attention from revocation just to trust and trust policy like in certificate verification evaluation we just focused on that part so it was like okay we'll just revisit this to make sure we covered our ground here so do we want to so do we want to Okay, like like cuz these are the two that seem to be I mean they're not there's a little bit of overlap right yeah. um because yeah. if we're saying that this is kind of more even though it says key but it's more certificate think, and then this is related to certificate revocation what do we want to agree on is the consolidated place do we want to put it here or do we want to elaborate here like cuz there's yeah. both good, so both of these have good great. information in both places right i think that is brainstorming of the the i think the first one was brainstorming and the one second one is basically where we were writing the spec it looks to me because in, in that if you see there are multiple ideas from there we can pick few and still keep that uh document Because it's just a brainstorming one. We were just, what are the ideas we want? There? What are the different ways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, so I like the place that Pratish pointed out too, because that's the document which has received the most review. The key, revo- the key revocation that MD hasn't received any reviews, and it was written at a time when not all of us were well versed with revocation hand- handling or the use cases for it. Uh, but this one that the location that pratish is pointing to has got high in the last one year that's fine buddy <laughs> cool i think we got hopefully that helps yes there are things okay. Yeah. okay okay now i and i don't think you need to delete the issue maybe just rename it um okay okay to, sounds to good. that and then that way we don't yeah. have to blow stuff yeah. up and all that yeah i don't want to do now yeah okay all right yeah okay. uh,
for the remaining time, we can either review the specs uh, which are out there or just call it an early day and uh, review it offline. I mean, um, I think I think specs might be good to go together. The code reviews, I I don't know. That's I, I think that's a little different. Um, but specs yeah. are kind of easy for everybody to go through and just maybe comment. So I'm down to. <clears throat> okay, let's bring. Sure. Okay. Which one do you want to read together here? Uh, how about this one? The spec uh, list logout one here. Okay. Patient list, list all the signatures of the signed artifact. Do you want to switch to the to the easy view? I, I like the view. Of the, okay. On the, the uh, on on the, the list, so on uh, it's not about local CAC. We will be making remote call for all the artifacts. So we might want to page paginate this API if that is the case. So I guess I will. On for the list, what's the feedback? Uh, we might want to paginate the API. So I, I, I assume in last discussion, we said that we will drop cache, local, it's in the cache one, right. cache mm -hmm. support. Yep. So this list will will call ORAS uh, uh, reference API for everything and fetch the signature. If they are like, let's say 200 right. signatures, it might fetch all of them, which user might not want to, we might want to paginate this API. I'm not sure what's a good model here. Uh, I see. Yeah. Sorry. Because I think OLAS also support pagination, so we should like pass it on to this API. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if that would change the user experience or not, or just if it knows if the results are over a certain amount, you just page paginate it anyway. Do you yeah, know what but, I mean? Yes, but I'm not sure how it will work. Like. We should we should be able to communicate this to the uh, user that this is not all the results, and you have to fetch well, more. Well, this is let's see, this is for a signed artifact. It's not. Yeah. I mean, like it's unlikely that for a single artifact you're going to get a pagination effect. Uh, you might. That's what I'm saying. Like user can show more than twenty signatures, thirty signatures over time. Okay. So I think yeah, yeah. Like, no, I hear you. Yeah, it could over time be that way, I guess. But I just don't, I don't, I mean, for RC1, I don't know if we need to, I mean, we might need to handle that um, in the code, but I'm just thinking from an end user perspective, let's say it does have 30 references and it's just a huge dump. Like, what would the user need to do differently? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, why, why would I, they need I, I, to? Yeah, I understand. Like, but yeah, so usually on API, but I can talk from talk from API perspective. You pass pagin pagination token. I'm not sure how it's usually handled in CLI. I might have to do some reading on that. But yes. Okay. Do you do you have a short key where where you have to do like a page down or page up shortcut key? Uh, might be like. I have to look into that one. Like, I have never done pagination on CLI, so I like so. I have no idea that how it's usually done. British, but how will pag pagination affect? Like, even if you don't have pagination, uh, like. Pagination can be offered as these by the system. Like in Linux, you can pipe okay. it and do a page there, right? I was wondering aloud. Like, does the command have to natively support it, or we can rely on the operating system to help with pagination? It depends. It's like how better, like, do you want to cushion it for the servers or not? I will put it like this. Uh, for example, usually on server side, this API is paginated for sure. Now the question is, does does user want to iterate over all the results, or you so just want to look into the if it, if they find in first why one, why should we retrieve the next ten one? 
for example you say looking for a signature which they found in first 10 first 10 signatures do we still want to go and query next let's say there are total of 50 signatures do we still want to go and query next 40 signatures like i don't have a good answer here because i don't know how it works in cli world but to me it doesn't look right we might want to do some reading on this and make sure what we're doing is right here i see what you're saying and it probably also yep. depends That's on right. how the reference api is implemented does it support pagination by default yes it is it is paginated by default oh it is this okay then okay. I, okay then i okay you will have the, normally in the cli right you will have the command for no pagination or whether you can paginate and what's the page size what's the max number of items for example if you have 500 items and if you turn on the pagination and if you have the 1500 then it will the api handles it all and it retrieves all the 1500 and yeah it displays that's how it works in the command line prompt usually uh, and if you turn off uh, the pagination then it retrieves only the first 500 and it displays only the first 500 and the other thousand is not displayed because you turned off the pagination so that's how it is yeah. and how you have to retrieve it should be sorted by the latest to the oldest because oldest might not be uh, might not be applicable for the yeah. Your thing. Yeah. So the sorting criteria also needs yeah. to be handled during pagination. So uh, th those are all. That, that would be tricky part. I am not sure whether yeah. those are that's, sorted that's, by date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think we can keep moving if that's okay. Yeah. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. login. Any any issues on the login? I mean, it looks pretty straightforward to me. I don't... <laughs> Okay. Okay, we'll go to log out. Also seems pretty straightforward, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, log in. Log in. Log in. This is the new command, right? The list of all the plugins. Hang on. I have a, I have a question in mind. Um, yeah. Um, maybe I'm just, that's an absurd question, but we are assuming we'll be logging into only one registry at a time. <laughs> That's a very good question. Are you? Oh uh, really yeah, yeah. I think it, so. I think that the the, but yeah, you're right. That is good. A good uh, call in the docs because you should be able to log in to multiple registries. Um, so I think that's just a matter of specifying, um, like that in the notes, right? Like like you can log into this registry. You can log into that registry. You can log into different registries or not but yeah I, I think we need to we need to clarify that it's good feedback so, so when you log out do you have to specify which registry you're logging out of correct yeah mm -hmm. this is server part i mean the server part is basically the registry you are at, you are at. but ideally when you are logging into multiple registry it should you should have a separator right you should not have like login into registry one login registry two kind of right and when you log out, if you don't give any registry name, whatever registries you have logged in should kind of log out ideally. That is the best user experience if I if you see so that I don't have to log out all the registries. But if I give a specific registry and not give other registries, then yes, it should log out only that registry and not touch the other two registries. But if you do not give any parameters for the logout, then all log then registry should log out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't think we have that the way that I mean, I don't I don't think we have I mean we don't have that the way it works today, but I guess if that's the question, if we want it to work like that, right? Like if you want to log out without specifying server or 
log out all or something, right? Or log out with the dash dash all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that's the best experience we can give for the user. But log in, if it is multiple registries, then what is the separate, right? Do we is it a pipe delimited? It's a comma, what is it that we have to define that or nothing but space? So Mm, if it mm, or just log out without a all without server maybe yeah just log out log out means all registries log out or we can give a parameter called all it's fine over because accidentally if they click on log out then it will log out all registries so maybe it can be a parameterized log out Come on. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Oh, it. <laughs> no. Oh, maybe I should do this. Here, this will be. Yeah. Okay. Plug in. The list of plugins is from any directory. Uh, like, I think we have multiple directories, right? When yeah, it would list all the plugins. Yeah. All the plugins. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All the installed plugins. Okay. And uh, David, the use case for the plugin command is uh, right now, it is just tell me all the plugins listed. The only pl plugin command available is list command today. Correct. So, okay. And then in the plugin list, we list uh, all the plugins. And I'm just thinking aloud here if there are multiple plugins, are we giving a verbose option for all the plugins, or should there be a verbose option for a specific plugin? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think you just give uh, I'll, you just give everything that is there for the plugin, and that's it. Okay. What would be the output of this? Just the URL and the name of the plugin. I think it should have the version number of the plugin at a minimum because plugins could have versions on it. So that's a good point. What are we reading from to display it? Like, what is? So I think there's a contract. Like yeah, that. I'm gonna. Yeah, it might be good to have the output because there is an output of this command. Uh, yeah, because based on the contract, right, Samir, we have the validity of the plugin, right? What is it good for? What is exactly. the version of the plugin? Exactly. Yeah. So, can you see my screen here? Yeah. The 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 Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's the plugin list right there. Okay. Descriptions, uh, version, version capabilities. capabilities, and error. Yeah. That, that oh, this good. is good. This is cool. Yeah, that looks good at right. So I think we're fine. This sounds like the only feedback here is really just add the output like this to the doc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, uh, what is global flex for plugin? I don't think. Do we need I'm global sorry. flex for? Do we need global flex for plugin line number thirty and thirty nine? Global flex. The plain HTTP 30. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. What is that? Oh, uh, well, it, yeah, that is weird here. I'm just, do we need this? Oh. Uh, 
Maybe we should create one for and David, I think they dropped. I need to drop as well. Yep, I do. I do as well. All right, cool. Okay. Well, I think we got Thank this you. reviewed. So yeah. it sounds like once we, once we have these feedbacks, I think everybody will be good. Yeah. <laughs> on this sure. one. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.